right, YouTube. So today uh, we are working with a Frigidaire Affinity Dryer. All right, I have it disassembled. All right, to see what the issue was. Basically what was happening is on the little screen, we had an error code that said door open. Every time I wanted to start, right now it says E66, which is the same similar error, okay? I'm gonna, tell you, I'm, I'm gonna show you exactly what it is and I'm gonna show you how I got to that point, how I diagnosed that, as you can say, all right? So that code E66 or door open, what I was getting was it wasn't starting. So first that I did was I checked the sensor, the door switch, that was fine. All right, and then from there, what I checked is usually the belt when it rips, there's a switch behind that pulley, all right? This one doesn't have that. So I skipped that part and then I went to the thermal fuse. Usually a thermal fuse on, on a basic dryer, that's what controls the power to, to the mortar, all right? So on this occasion, that's what I found. It's just this thermal fuse looks a little different. It looks like a high limit cutoff, all right? So anybody that's familiar with those Kenmore's and Whirlpool dryers, the thermal fuses are like a white, um, long little fuse, All right? So this one, it looks like that. It goes right in the side of that blower. So that's the sensor, that's the issue, all right? So we just gotta switch that out and that's gonna fix it. So now that I'm here, let me go ahead and just disconnect the dryer. Remember, every time you're gonna check one of these dryers, they are 220, so you wanna be safe, all right? And disconnect it before you work on these. Because a 220 shock is a pretty heavy shock. So anyways, going back here, now I'm gonna basically take advantage that I have it disassembled, and I'm gonna give you a few tips of other situations just in case that you have another issue or in the future, if you are repairing for our customers, you'll come across this video. So I'll give you some tips. Anyways, so let's go in, into the heat, the heating element, because these are not common heating elements. All right, this one has a, a four prong heating element, three on the side, on the left side, and you have your other port. How to check these? It's very easy. You get one of these multimeters, put it on continuity. All right, so let me go ahead and turn mine on. Continuity, so how do you check these? So all you do, you put one of the leads here and the other other lead, you put it opposite side, which is on, on, on this port. Through the outside or inside, it doesn't matter. That's how you check that, okay? If it's good, then you check the second one. And then the third one, see, they're all good. Okay, if one of the, if one of the ports it was broken inside and it, and it won't beep, it will throw a code, just like the code that I just showed you. But it will throw a, a 63 or a 64 code. So, let me go ahead and go in more details. So there's other occasions where when you have a short, okay, if one of the ports, like I'd mentioned, it's broken, it will throw a code on the control board. Now, I've seen other occasions where one of these or one of these uh, leads to the element breaks and touches metal, all right? When that happens, that also is called a short, okay? So that will throw another code. So 63 is when it's broken. Um, 64 is when one of those leads is touching the metal, all right? Good thing is that these dryers have those sensors. So that will send out a code as a short and it will not um, cause a fire basically, like in the old classic dryers when they don't have those type of sensors, all right? So when those, basically you just, yeah, you, you hear a, a burnt inside. So it's good that these have those type of computer error codes, all right? Just to prevent any, any shorts, any fires or anything like that for safety issues. Now, once again, so if that, that's the issue, then you just wanna change your element, all right? If the, one of the leads is broken or one of the leads is touching metal, then you just change the whole element, okay? 
Now, if it's not heating, but you check all those ports and everything is good, but you're still not getting heat, then you wanna check your high limit cutoff. This is what it looks like, two little legs, all right, and two ports. This is your cutoff, this is your, your thermostat recycling temperature. So that's your temperature, um, for example, when you put it on, on in front, you put low heat, high heat, medium heat. So that's the, the that's the one that tells the element how hot you want it to be. So if it's always cold or, or mid, always mid, always mid, you want to change that. But if it overheats and is burning your clothes, that's also your issue. But if it gets way too hot, this is your safety for that one. So if it gets too hot, this will turn off the whole element. All right. I've seen occasions where your blower, your ventilation in your house, if it's clogged up with lint, your heating element is going to heat up more than normal. So if that's the issue, once again, your high limit cutoff will turn off. And if it's not getting any heat, that's one of the issues. It's either because there's recycling thermostat sensor went bad or inside your house, there's a lot of lint. You always want to check that. Check your dryer's lint every single time you use it. So for some reason, if you see those fuses blown, uh, don't just change them. You gotta see why it, it, it blew out. Check your ventilation, make sure there's no lint inside your house. And if everything is all good, then you change both fuses, okay? On, the, on That's on the heating. So going back to the start switch. Um, so yeah, that's the sensor I'm gonna go ahead and replace. I already got the new one. All right, so that one, we're gonna change it out and show you right here. This is the other one. Let's see if you can read those numbers, all right? But what we're looking for is that one right there. It says L180F. So if it senses that it's more than 180, it's gonna cut out power to prevent any fires, all right? It should not get hotter than that. So to how to disassemble these, a quick brief once again. Um, you want to check out the screws on the back side of the dryer. Lid will slide open forward. You push it back, it opens up. And then you want to do this, unscrew this, unscrew that. That comes off. You see those screws right there? You put the, the top up and then you have where the holds the top, this front metal piece, all right? So for right there and then remove the belt from the pulley and that's how it will open all right now you pull out the, the belt up forward and you get out and you get the the tub out so once again if you need a more detailed video i do have more videos on my channel so just go ahead and check them out i just didn't want to make the video too long uh, but once again if you have any other issues on this model or any similar model, send me a message. I will try to answer as many as I can. Um, if you need any parts, I get original parts from the manufacturers, all right? Uh, just be careful when you order through eBay or Amazon, there is a lot of third-party companies. I don't recommend changing a an important part, third party. Let me explain. If it's a heating element, get the original. I've already used it. I already went through that route. That's what I'm, I'm telling you because of my experience. I've ordered elements like this for 30, 40 bucks on eBay or Amazon. Four months later, customer calls me back, same issue. Just kind of, I guess, relieve that headache, okay? If it's going to be a belt, if it's going to be one of those rollers, then go ahead and get them. But if it's going to be an important part like sensors or elements, the mortar, computer board, anything like that. I know they are a little pricey, but they will basically worth it because you're getting the original from the manufacturer. There's no third party, there's no simplified or cheaper, cheaper version, just get the original on those parts. If it's a little knob, if it's something else like a screw or something like that, then go ahead and go third party. Just for your safety because once again, they're third party and they do go bad. And not just going bad that you have to get another one. Sometimes is uh, element, if it's not well made, the material is not the same, 
it could cause a fire. So just be careful with those, okay? But yeah, if you need any parts, let me know. I can send them to you. Um, I accept cash up, Venmo, everything like that, straight through the manufacturer with three months warranty on all parts. So let me know. All right, so that's it. Once again, any questions, leave a comment. Thank you, guys. So this is what it looks like. I just added it to the video just in case you have one of these and you want to disassemble. Once again, there's uh, screws in the back. You want to do the screws. Lid will push back. You get access to those screws. Not this one, but this one. All right. One in each side. Just like that. Top comes off. You put it to the side. Then you got screws right there right there and on the bottom as well all right push the dryer back you get screws two on the bottom and then two right here to hold the blower after here you get access to this frame four screws on each corner all right and that's how you unassemble and disassemble if you have further questions let me know yeah.